What's going on everybody? So today I want to talk about Daniel and whether or not he's good at the lower ranks. You can see here I have Mythic Zero. I did this for Leo as well. Um, I ended up, based on that video, pushing my Leo towards Immortal because I found it to be so absolutely amazing that I wanted to push him even further because he was already amazing at Mythic level. So I want to do the same thing here for Daniel because we just got this guy. We still have the Christmas banner going on. I personally am waiting just to test him out for this video because I personally have not tested him out at the lower ranks. And I've also not seen any videos testing him out at the lower ranks. So I want to see, you know, is he already viable? And if he is, then that makes, makes him even better because you could either keep him at this level, get use out of him, or push him even further and get massive, massive value from him. So I want to show that in this video. Now, the reason why we're using him um, and the reason why everyone loves Daniel here is because he's going to be the summon king, essentially, due to his passive um, right here. When there are four or four summons, I believe this just means four summons on the battlefield, at the same time, uh, Daniel gains an aura. When an enemy uses a displacement scale, we have crit rate and treatment rate by 30% uh, for five seconds, a reduction of crit rate and treatment rate. This is really good for PvP. And the second one, which is the more important one, allied summons gain 13% attack and defense that's huge and this can increase up to 15 percent assuming you don't have any commanders and if you have the talent which i don't and you most likely won't because it's on mythic level you need to go ahead and i don't even know where it is um okay it's over here um and i believe this is like legendary two or legendary four not quite sure but that's way farther down the line so we're not going to get value out of that one we also have three different summons, um, and these three different summons are gonna do all their own different things, um, but they're basically, what you need to know is that they scale off of Daniel's attack, defense, and they get HP based on his attack, um, which is really, really important. So based on that, we really, really wanna build a ton of attack on him and don't really care about crit rate, crit damage, because all of his summons scale off of attack. Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and just build them out with some of the, you know, not insane, but just basic attack pieces that I've had. Um, and let's see what we can get on him. And then I'm going to run him in Ancient Altar. That's the one I really want to test out here. I'm going to run him in Campaign as well. But Ancient Altar are, are, is the big one for me because that's the main huge game-changing summon area. I want to see if he's going to boost up my damage any significant amount compared to what I can do before with the comps that I would use before. So I will be right back, gear up this guy, and then show you guys the stats. So I just geared him up. I'll show you guys the gear and the gear sets and everything in just a second. We're looking for attack. Defense is actually not bad on him as well because we're, he's going to give that defense over to his summons and his HP on the summons are going to be based on that attack. So you want to stack as much attack, get some defense on there as possible. I just have uh, two hero uh, armor sets, which is going to be really, really nice. And uh, I just get some mismatching pieces that were just attack main stat with a little bit of defense uh, and potentially HP on them. So that's what we're running if you just compare that to let's just say like emma who's an immortal level you can see the the attack here 23.4k if you just scroll down to like sorietta here base attack is 9906 um, and again if you just scroll down to daniel who's a mythic level the base attack is so much lower so that's why we need to determine if the mythic quality is good enough now let me just jump into the ancient altar it's about to reset in five hours so i gotta get this done um but we're gonna do hard right and previously i had about 30 million damage is the max single damage if i just look at the comp i was using previously uh this was the comp i was using like negrama here Liren, senway kalaza um as my two summon characters and i was doing as much damage as i possibly could there team uh, my main boss fight was that same comp so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna modify this comp a little bit and uh we're gonna see how much we can kind of change things um i think what i'll do is i'll just run this okay i'll run this exact comp here i'll move myself to the middle and uh because of that hold on let me just see if i have the most accurate um updated versions of these some of these runes here um yeah so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and run this exact comp and then keep the the character here the commander and all of the prototypes the exact same and i'm going to swap out someone like negrama here and put in daniel just to see how much he changes this comp 
I know Nagrama's not the absolute best here, but I want to just see the difference between someone like Nagrama just to throw in some random character that you have versus Daniel, who's really meant for this squad. Again, I know it's not a perfect test, but I just want to see for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and play this out, come back to you, and then we will see the damage of this team, and then I'll do the Daniel version live. Be right back. All right, so we are in the fight here with this team, and I wanted to slow it down and just take stock of what's going on here. I'll have the recording. I want to see what time these guys are beating it, how much damage everyone is doing, because remember, Daniel buffs up all summon characters. So yes, we might be able to beat it with this comp and the other comp, but how fast are we beating it? That could be a big indicator of how much damage and defensive capabilities we're bringing in. Of course, how much damage is Daniel doing compared to someone like Negrama as well? Because Negrama, even though it's not meant for this team comp, still is doing 4.1 million, which is a decent, you know, contributing factor. So super important that uh, I make sure all of that is, you know, kind of in stock here. And uh, you can see here at the very end, we're going to be beating it at about, uh, I'll have to go ahead and pull the recording on that one. But I'll, I'll, I think it was like, but I think it was somewhere around uh, like six seconds remaining and the damage totals are uh, were on the screen here. So let's just go ahead and run that back, except we're going to put Daniel in here as the fourth or the fifth member. Everything's exactly the same. And uh, while this is playing out here, um, I will pull up that recording just to compare as we were going through. But first, we have to go ahead and beat up this first boss fight. So I will meet you there. So we're in the fight again. You can see on the right hand side of my screen, I have the time, actual time that the battle was in, as well as the damage that everyone was doing, um, which is very, very important. What I'll go ahead and do is slow that to one time speed. Once we reach about that 41 second mark and play both at the same time, just to see how the damage compares, um, because I think that's a pretty important thing to look at. And we're going to see how fast each one kills their respective monster. OK, we're already um, doing a lot more damage with Daniel. Um, as you can see, looks like he is kind of able to keep up with the skewered hand. He started surpassing them. So already a little bit more damage again out of a mythic character versus um, someone that is, uh, you know, that uh, non actual immortal type character. So here we go. We'll play both of these at the same time. Uh, pretty important to watch here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and showcase the HP bars again. I'll put this just right on the screen so we can see it. So here's the HP bar here of the previous fight, and uh, they are behind by quite significantly. You can see the damage of Kalaza and Senway are massively increased over here on the left hand side uh, because of how much increased damage that they're doing. And it looks like they're going to end the fight here um, on this battle at 19 seconds, which is really, really nice. And no one died, and Daniel actually did some very, very good damage, if you guys saw there. Um, now, in this one, we are going to drop this done down to about, looks like, again, six seconds is what I said last time. And I think that was accurate. Um, so we're going to be about, yep, about five seconds, actually. Yes, yeah, so about five seconds is the total amount of time that it took. So Daniel massively boosting up that comp, even at a mythic level. Now, again, if you were to put someone like Botmark 2 in there, um, yes, that probably would be comparable, if not better. The problem is that I don't want to take anything away from my main comp. And so what do I pull here? If I'm free to play player, which I am, um, who do I pull, right? Who do I pull to put in this top team comp? I have Paluno, who's an AoE damage dealer, right? I have Hercules, who's not going to do a lot of damage, right? And then I have like Ravenna, I have Rez in here, which I actually would like to use here. Um, I just built them up, so I would like to, you know, figure out a comp for Ancient Altar, but that's like another video. Um, so for team three, you know, I'm using Artist, Serena, Botmark 2, Emma, Taylor. Okay, if that's my team comp right now, I don't want to pull any of those characters out of there. All of those characters are kind of important. Artists, maybe. I kind of want to pull him out and maybe put him in team one or maybe in a different team. Um, but that's it. That's all I... That's the only person I really want to change out of there. And he won't be better for team two. Daniel is the perfect slot in for this team comp. Perfect slot in. Now, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and just share my... Um, my campaign squad here because I want to see if he does anything for this like Leo did at mythic level he just absolutely changed my my account really but I'll go ahead and just start the battle just to show you guys what this is like here um currently it's actually a really really tough fight um I have Leo on manual here because I'm trying to manual him through this battle um but he just gets absolutely wrecked um because of the orange here the orange just do such massive damage let me see there oh and he 
gets himself killed and everyone just dies, right? So it's pretty tough. Uh, but let me just see if Daniel does anything. This is kind of like a hard comparison, right? Because, um, I mean, Daniel, he's not ready for this end game campaign battle, I don't think. And he's just absolutely already just getting nuked here. He did spawn the wolf. So, you know, maybe he's got some trick up his sleeve. We're gonna go straight for that back line there. And uh, maybe the, you know, the random summons are gonna help us out here. I'm not quite sure. I'm really not quite sure. Yeah, so Daniel's dead already. That's kind of what happens to those guys on the left-hand side. Um, let's go ahead and just... Oh, we, we almost got another AoE off. So Daniel might help a little bit, but it's kind of hard to tell, to be honest. It's kind of hard to tell. Let me just move him in the back line. Give him a little bit of extra support here and see if uh, if that changes anything. So let me just move my Leo up in the front, make sure he's tanking the front of all that damage. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and just run him back here. And uh, let me see if this changes anything. Taylor will be able to jump back here. And I think Leo's just gonna die here. So there's goes, goes Leo. We do have all these summons coming out from Daniel. Interesting. You can see Daniel's damage was like 200K. It was pretty low, but that's because his summons would just constantly die. So I'm not sure about campaign, you know, he. It's, it was very clear that Leo was great in campaign because I ran him in there and he was instantly doing above everyone else's damage and he was able to tank up everything, right? So Leo was like, like a clear, oh my goodness, he's actually changing my account. But Daniel here wasn't doing a crazy amount of damage. It really didn't offer a crazy amount. I still think he's decent for campaign. The problem is that I'm later on in the game and, uh, and something like mythic level really doesn't just compete right now, I don't think for campaign. So I think that's where he's gonna be a little bit uh, worse off. But I think Ancient Altar did a, he did a really nice showing and I think he's absolutely viable at Mythic. And I'm actually really happy I invested because I got a copy of him um, from the summons and then I got a um, free copy of him from the Christmas. So if you guys are doing the Christmas event, you should at least have two copies at an epic level. Um, and at an epic level, I think he's absolutely viable at the Ancient Altar, which is the main place that you're going to want to use him. If you're like me and you, um, were interested in testing him out just a little bit higher level at mythic level i invested a gene hybrid into him and i'm not regretting it for a single second keep in mind guys we don't even have his exclusive on when you get his exclusives on he's going to instantly deploy an eagle when entering the battlefield which is an absolutely amazing exclusive and then of course just all the stats that you're getting which is absolutely massive but the best thing that he's bringing is just the boost to summons so if you don't have a summon team already like a senway um or kalaza built if you missed out on the rise of heroes event or if you don't have a kalaza or anything like that then maybe he's going to be less useful but you know i'd love to have like a muka in there as well and run a full team comp of summons and then just have daniel crush the opposition that's kind of the goal um so i think if that's your goal definitely definitely viable and i would highly recommend that you use this character thanks for watching everyone hopefully you enjoyed um, i think this guy really did kind of impress me for in terms of the summon building so definitely recommend you guys build him out for that and nothing more else to say so if you enjoyed like this video sub to the channel guys and i'll see you all tomorrow